They're not terrible. It's just, why would you eat them? You know, it kind of tastes like living chalk. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is gonna be fun because <laughs> I came up with some questions for what I'm calling the Valentine book tag. I might ch change that name. <laughs> I was thinking maybe like the Cupid book tag or something. <laughs> I don't know. I basically was thinking about the romance genre and romance reads as one does in February. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to make a video talking about romances I'm excited to read in 2022. But that's not all I want to talk about. <laughs> so then I was like, let's just come up with some fun kind of romance genre questions but then also tie it into Valentine's Day because it's February. And so I have some really fun questions, which I'll write out below about candy to eat while reading and music and a reading date and flowers and just romance in general. And I'm calling this again, the Valentine book tag, unless I come up with something more creative. But as of this moment, that's what the name of this book tag is. Um, I'll make sure to leave all of the questions down below. And if you'd like to answer them along with me, please do so either in the comments or in your own video, because I'm pretty excited about these questions. <laughs> and I just think that the answers that will come out of them will be very different and unique and fun per person. So if you'd like to leave your answers down below or in a video, I would love to read them. However, it doesn't just stop there, my friends. <laughs> no, about a year and a half ago, like two Halloweens ago, I did this video where I talked about like scary movies and like thrillers that I really like, but I was eating Halloween candy in that video. And so for today's Valentine book tag, I went out and bought Valentine's themed candy. So this is all like February heart-shaped little shits. And I'm so excited to try them because so many of these I haven't tried and I'm excited to see how they taste. So I'm gonna go through the questions, have some candy, answer them. Hopefully you answer them alongside me, but that's what this video is my friends and I hope you enjoy. So let's pick a candy and a question and get right to it. All right, we're gonna start. <laughs> of course we start here. We're gonna start with the green M&M, that saucy minx. And this is, the reason why I chose these are these are Black Forest Cake M&Ms. They're not just any old M&M. These are Black Forest Cake M&Ms. I've never had these before. They looked phenomenal and so did the green M&M. And we're gonna answer our first question while I try these. So the first question, this is apt, is what's the perfect candy to eat while reading? It comes in Valentine colors. Do you see this? Pink, red, and white. Super cute. I don't know if you're seeing this at all, uh, but let's try this first and then I'll answer. <laughs> Mm-hmm, totally. That Those are so good. They're so good, I'm gonna put them to the side. Those are excellent. Um, so to answer this question, what's the best candy to eat while reading? I'm gonna go ahead and say not the Black Forest Cake M&Ms. Just, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> I did not like those. <laughs> anyway, perfect candy to eat while reading. So I'm gonna go with Sour Patch Kids, number one, because they're my favorite candy ever. And they don't melt. However, I have been known to get a sour crystal in the spine of my pages. So I wouldn't say they're the perfect candy to eat while reading. They're just my perfect candy to eat while reading because holy hell, they are the best candy on planet Earth. Also, while I have you here, you may have noticed this like ruby red heart necklace I'm wearing. 
perhaps I'm too far away. Just trust me, it's gorgeous. Um, and you might be asking yourself, where's it from? <laughs> Maybe not, um, but it's from Ana Luisa, which is a jewelry company that I have a necklace with. I have a little hand gold necklace with. And right now everything on their site is on sale because of Valentine's Day. And jewelry is a wonderful gift to get so many people for Valentine's Day. So if you would like to get my necklace at a discount or really anything else on their website as a discount, including this heart necklace, you can do so. I'll link my necklace down below, but um, everything's on sale if you want anything else. It's on sale. Beautiful Valentine's Day sale. Anyway, let's get to the next question. And that is, what's a song that reminds you either of a specific romance novel or character or just your most romantic song, right? I was trying to pick one that's like specifically about a book or a book character, but if you just have like a super romantic song, please share it because Lord knows I love romance, <laughs> whether in my real life or in fiction, but I just love romance and I love sad and sappy songs. So just give me all the suggestions, please. But I'm thinking my answers for these are two very specific answers. <laughs> The first song that reminds me of a romance is this instrumental song called Izakaya, and I'll leave the name and the artist right here so you can check them out. I found this song maybe two years ago, and about two years ago is when I found The Kiss Quotient, the romance novel. And so I listened to this song back to back to back. I think I actually put it on single repeat while I was reading The Kiss Quotient. And so it's all I listened to. And it reminds me so much of that book because it's on my reading playlist on Spotify. And I've just been listening to it for two years. And yet The Kiss Quotient is the song that pops into my head. The second answer, <laughs> you know, You'll understand when I say it. If you've been there, you've been there. So journey back with me to like 2008, please. Like let's get Miss Frizzle on board and let's journey to the past. 2008-ish, I'm reading New Moon for the first time in my life and I am a wreck. I am devastated for what is happening in New Moon. And the thing... <laughs> The thing that got me through it was Evanescence. Is there anything more perfect than that, right? Evanescence and New Moon just somehow work. It was just the album Fallen, like with the big blue head, like the big blue album cover. That was the song for New Moon for me. <laughs> and so whenever Evanescence comes on, whether out in the world or by my own decree, um, it transports me back to a time when I was journey journeying through um, New Moon for the first time and just crying my eyes out. So there's that answer. Let's now choose another candy. I'm gonna go with the Hershey's Kisses in the flavor lava cake. So it has some meltage going on and I've never had these. All right, um, the packaging is super cute. Are you seeing this cute little heart? Oh my God, I know I'm gonna like this. Holy shit. Ooh! Mm-hmm. That was divine. Those lava cake kisses are amazing. Next question is, if you were going on a date to read with someone, and that doesn't have to be romantic, although it can be, a romantic date, a best friend date, a family date, like maybe you're going with your sister somewhere to just read in the sunshine, where would your perfect reading date take place? And let's just not stop there. I'm gonna say, pick any place in the world. So if your answer is like, wow, a really romantic reading date would be like, in one of the fields next to the Eiffel Tower. That's a great answer. And if that's your answer, awesome. I'm glad I read your mind. So you can pick anywhere in the world or you could keep it more kind of generic, just kind of like a more open-ended, broader answer. So 
My kind of grand idea, like if I could travel anywhere right now, I think a beautiful reading date would be in Ireland um, at the Cliffs of Moher. I've been there and I'll admit, it probably wouldn't be a very relaxing reading date because the wind would be trying to rip the book out of my hands, but it would be beautiful all the same. So I'm gonna say Ireland for my kind of grand answer and then for a more attainable answer, um, I think going to a more secluded and cliffside beach. So I'm specifically thinking kind of Carmel or Big Sur with like a really cute picnic blanket, some sliced strawberries, some Sour Patch Kids, and a new favorite, these lava cake kisses. Next one, we're gonna do create a bouquet based off of your favorite romance or your favorite character in a romance, or maybe just your favorite book. If it's not a romance, that's totally fine. It could be for a fantasy you love or a thriller you love, but I'm gonna create a bouquet for, are we surprised? We're not the hating game. We gotta have red roses in it, of course, because there are literally red roses in the book, but also because of the red lipstick. Then we're gonna go with some traditional baby's breath, just because I love baby's breath. <laughs> and I think that's very Valentine's Day. Then I'm gonna go with maybe just the leaves off of a strawberry plant, because they're kind of quirky and weird, but also strawberries in the book. Um, and then we're gonna round it off with something blue because of the eyes and the Smurfs, which I don't love the Smurfs in that book, <laughs> but... <laughs> They're, you know, they're blue. So I'm gonna say like maybe some pops of blue hydrangea or some thistles to give it a little bit of spice because it is a pretty spicy and steamy book at places. That's my answer for now. I think that's good for now. I don't wanna add anything else because I don't want it to get chaotic. You know what I mean? I think that's a good answer. <laughs> All right, let's choose another candy. And we're gonna do the final chocolate product I purchased. This is the Hershey's Hearts in the flavor strawberry cream, which is really apt because I just made a hating game bouquet. So I've never had these and I don't really like strawberry filled stuff. Um, like I don't really like strawberry cake very much. So let's see how these taste. There are these little hearts, super cute, right? Love that. Oh my God, that smells like a strawberry. <laughs> mm. Actually, I don't hate them. There's a little bit of pink in the center. I don't know if you can see. Oh, I actually do not hate that. And that is promising. Next question is not really about romance, it's about friendship. So what is a friendship you've seen in a book that has genuinely made your heart melt and made you wanna like hug your best friend a little closer the next time? Um, okay, I'm gonna give a romance novel answer and then not a romance novel answer. The first one is the friendship in Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren is super sweet and super genuine and like it's not perfect, but they're just like these young kids that have feelings for each other, but are just exploring friendship at first. And so I just felt like it was really sweet and innocent and like really honest. I think like the both of the characters in that book are so vulnerable and they've gone through some stuff. And so they're coming together in this like, I need someone to trust and I hope it's you kind of mentality. And I just think it's super sweet. So I love the friendship in that book. But another friendship that I think a lot about and the friendship that I thought about right when I was thinking of this question was oddly the friendship in Radio Silence. And I say that's odd because I didn't love Radio Silence. It ju I just didn't click with it as much as I thought I was or thought as much as I thought I was going to. And yet, the friendship in that book just felt super genuine to me because 
it's not perfect. And they have a kind of instant connection as friends and they're like really leaning into it. And yet there is a lot of miscommunication and kind of awkwardness and not really knowing like what the other person is thinking because friends aren't perfect and there is gonna be tension and there is gonna be miscommunica miscommunications. And I just really liked that and appreciated that Alice Oseman was able to capture that so well. So there we go. The next question is, what romance do you not necessarily need a whole sequel for? You just want to check in with the characters. And for this one, I knew the answer immediately. And that is Honey Girl. Because I felt like Honey Girl had such a good arc and it just had like such a good, like there was so much tension and, and just like, ups and downs in the book and then it feels so relieving once you get to the end of it and so i really liked the ending of that book i think it wrapped things up really nicely and so i don't need a whole second book i just want like an epilogue i just want like a short story checking in seeing how the characters are doing seeing how our main character is doing hoping that she's thriving hoping that work is going well hoping that like the relationship is blooming and blossoming. I I just remember feeling so satisfied at the end of that book, but really wishing I could just kind of check in with them or like hang out with them for a day in like a short story format and just make sure that everything's going okay. So that is definitely my answer for that one. Okay, this next question, I don't have an answer for yet. I came up with the question and then didn't think of an answer. So I'm going to try a candy while I think about it. But the question is, what date from a book or movie do you wish you could go on yourself? And I said, or movie, because I feel like I visually remember certain dates more than I remember how they were written in books. So like, I remember the romance and the overall structure, but I can't remember the specific dates. But if you can remember a specific date from a specific book, I'd love to know like what the best date was. I am gonna answer, well, actually no, <laughs> I'm gonna try, I can't. So I'm gonna try these Gopstopper Heartbreakers. It's jawbreakers that change colors and flavors, which is fun, right? Okay, so this is really a jawbreaker. <laughs> I'm not just gonna chew it, apparently. First impressions, the outside sucks. Oh my God, I don't wanna break my jaw. Okay, I cracked it, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> my, uh, my first impressions on the Gobstoppers is they're not terrible, it's just why would you eat them? You know, it kind of tastes like living chalk. <laughs> like just sweetened marbles. <laughs> so these were not a winner for me. Okay, so the question is, which date from a book or movie do I wish I could go on myself? I'm gonna go with movie first because I thought of it right away and it would be the date in La La Land, um, which is funny, a lot of people don't like this scene. So the date is that they meet at the Rialto Theater in, uh, I don't think it's technically LA, I think it's Pasadena, um, but they go to the Rialto Theater to see a James Dean movie and they leave together and they go to Griffith Park and they go to the planetarium. And people don't like the scene because they like dance in the stars. <laughs> it's like a very weird, like magical moment where you're just kind of like, wait a second, I thought we were in the human world and now you are in the sky. So I understand why people don't like it. It's just that I love that scene. I love the swell of the music. I love the green dress that Emma Stone is wearing. And I just think it's like a super cute date to go on. Like you go to a movie and then you go to a planetarium. In what world? And then apparently you skydive through the stars, which is just magnificent. But if I'm thinking dates, I'm thinking of dates. Okay, my favorite date in a book. Now, this is just the one that just popped into my head. So I'll probably think of a way better answer once I'm editing this. 
But in the book Neon Gods, which is a Hades, Persephone, steamy retelling, they go to a greenhouse. Um, he, it's like his like sanctuary type of place, like Hades. That's like where he goes to disconnect. And the two of them go to the greenhouse to kind of like have an intimate, like romantic moment. Up until that point, it's all been kind of physical and now they're like actually starting to have feelings for each other. So that's my answer right now. And I can't really think of any others off the top of my head. All right, the next candy we'll be trying are the Jelly Belly Ra Red Raspberry Hearts. And did you know that when there's like a miss printing of jelly bellies, you know, like they don't look like a perfect jelly bean. They go into another like stack of jelly bellies and they're called belly flops. And you can buy packages of belly flops, which are just like morphed jelly bellies. And it's like the coolest thing, like such, such a good marketing idea. All right, so you know what they tried that's not quite a heart shape, but you know, valiant effort, my friends. Let's give this a spin. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. The verdict is in. These are amazing. <laughs> wow. Yes. All right, the sun is setting, so I'm sorry that the lighting is so weird. I just turned on another light. Hopefully this looks all right. The question is favorite nickname from a romance. So of all the romances you've read, what's one of those nicknames that has just really stuck out to you? So like Honey Girl is one of those. My favorite nickname from a romance is from a romance that's not out yet, <laughs> um, but it's Book Lovers by Emily Henry. And in that book, the other love interest calls the other character, my shark. I remember when I read my shark, I actually started tearing up because I was like, that was perfect for this moment. That was excellently done. This nickname is so cute and it came at just the right time. So that's my favorite nickname from a romance novel. All right, and then for the last candy and the last question, because the sun is truly setting now and I don't wanna like completely run out of light, um, but I'm gonna be, I mean, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna love these, <laughs> but it is the Sour Patch Kid Message Hearts editions. So I think these are gonna taste like regular Sour Patch Kids, but they're gonna be in heart shapes and that's, literally all I could ask for. So let's try this. Oh my God, I was so wrong and I'm actually mad about it. What the hell is this? Ew, they're like, they're like chalk hearts. They're like the, like the regular, what are they called? Conversational hearts? What are those called? They're just like the, what are those called? <laughs> They're like the heart candies that you get at Valentine's Day that like have the little messages on them. Oh my God, I'm so mad. I thought they were regular Sour Patch Kids. Ugh, they smell horrible. Okay, let's try this. I'm trying the pink one. Oh my God, that's sour. Holy God. I'm trying a yellow one now. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, those are sour, but I don't like them. I wish they were regular Sour Patch Kids, but actually maybe it's a good thing because I won't be tempted by them. I could literally throw them away right now. <laughs> That's how much I don't like them, but I'll keep them, I'll keep them. Okay, so my review on these, they suck. These suck, <laughs> these are so bad. And I just feel so played right now. You can't say Sour Patch Kids when they're chalk hearts. You also, I'm sorry, you can't have your gummy mascot on the front if they're not gummy. Oh, I am so angry. All right, and then the last question is most anticipated romances of this year. 
And I can do a whole video on these because I probably have like 25 romances that I'm super stoked about in 2022 that I just think are gonna be phenomenal. But I'll just give you a few right now. And if you would like a longer version, totally happy to do so. I actually took some screenshots of some romances I'm really, really excited about. Okay, this first one, bet on it. It's like a bingo romance, and I think the cover is sensational. <laughs> I love the cover so much. And Talia Hibbert, love her. She quoted, blurbed it, hot, yes, sweet, love, and utterly unique. Love it. I think it's gonna be so cute. I've always been so into bingo. Like, I don't play it. But when I was in elementary school, it was like the best day of the year was when the bingo cards came out. So never won. I don't think I ever won, but <laughs> I'm really excited for this one. Next one, we've got Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I read It Happened Once Summer, which is the first one in this romance series. But I'm really excited about this one because I think I'm going to like this sister more than the last sister. I like the idea of this of this pairing because you kind of get a glimpse of it towards the end of the first book. And I remember thinking like, oh, this is intense. <laughs> and I can feel the tension in the chemistry and I'm interested in it. So I'm excited for this one. I'm excited for Booked on a Feeling. I am just a absolute sucker for any type of romance that takes place in the book industry or in the reading industry, anything like that. I think it's so cute. And I think that's exactly what this book is about. I also read another book by JC Lee last summer, like a few months ago, maybe it was last summer, maybe it was the fall, but I really liked it. And I think this is gonna be so sweet. And I think that the cover is incredible. So I'm really excited for that one. Another book, I'm, another romance I'm really excited about is I'm So Not Over You. This just seems really fun. It comes out in February on the 22nd, so 22222. 22. Excellent day for a book release. This one looks amazing. It looks super sweet. I think this book, from what I've read, it's about kind of exes coming back together and kind of needing each other for something and then there might be a reconnection of feelings. And I love that. I think it's super interesting and it just looks amazing. And I love this cover. I love the flowers behind them. I think it looks amazing. And you know what? I'll stop it there. I don't wanna, there are so many romances I'm excited for this year. I read three arcs at the end of 2022 or 2021 that are all romances and I'd love to talk about them. So if you would like a more full-on romance TBR for 2022, I am super, super down to deliver um, because so many romances are coming out this year that I'm so thrilled about. Anyway, that is the end of this tag, my friends. Again, I will leave all these questions written out in the description if you would like to either answer them in the comments or in your own video. I had a lot of fun with this. I will say like, let's take a look at all these candies. The Sour Patch Kids are in dead last because they played me for a fool and I will not allow it. I also really didn't like the Gobstoppers. <laughs> I, you know, didn't love the Black Forest Cake M&Ms, but better than the other two that I just listed. From there, we're gonna go into the Hershey's Strawberry Clink Cream Hearts. That's third place. Then we're gonna sit with the Red Raspberry Hearts in second place. And then to wrap it all up, we're gonna end it in first place with the Lava Cake Hershey's Kisses. Super good, super fun, super tasty. And that's it. So anyway, that's the tag, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had fun. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.